It is said that when the main gate leading to the city of Jerusalem was closed for the night to protect them from barbarians and other invaders, there was a smaller gate that was left open, a rather narrow gate that would only allow one person to enter at a time. Not only was it narrow, but it was quite low. And it was said that even a camel could pass through that narrow gate if the camel would get down on its knees, have the cargo removed from its back, and be able to squirm through that narrow gate. It is said that that gate was called the Eye of the Needle. And I'm not sure if that's historically true, but I was fascinated with the article that I read talking about it. My longest assignment as a priest in the Diocese of Gaylord was when I was at St. Mary's Cathedral as the rector for 12 years. And the cathedral parish had a school, preschool all the way to 12th grade. And so every week during the school year, I would have mass one day for the junior high and the high school, and another day for the elementary students. And one day, as I had the elementary students for Mass, the gospel of that day was the gospel that we just heard this morning. And during those Masses with the elementary children, I always liked to have a dialogue homily with them to see what they understand, what sort of they took in from the Scripture readings. And so that morning, as I was reflecting with the children, I said, children, as I listen to the gospel, it sounds like in order to get to heaven, we have to go through a very narrow gate. Now, what do you think I need to do if I, when I die and I get to heaven, but I have all this stuff with me, and I look at that narrow gate and I think to myself, how am I going to get through? I got all this baggage with me, all these suitcases and bags and, and sacks. What do you think I need to do? Can someone tell me? Of course, all the elementary kids, their hands are up in the air. Everybody wants to give me an answer. Well, in the very front row, there's a little kindergarten, a little boy named Nelson, and he's waving his hands wildly. Now, typically, I never call on the real little ones because you never know what they're going to say. <laughs> but I knew Nelson, and he was a bright little kid. I said, okay, Nelson, if the gate to get into heaven is this really narrow gate, and I got all this stuff what do I need to do to get into heaven? And so Nelson jumped on the pew, put his arms out wide just like did, I did, and said, it's easy, Father, just turn sideways. <laughs> like I said, you never know what kids are going to say. As we listen to today's gospel, we might think that the man that came up to Jesus and said to him, what, do I, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He might have been trying to think to get into the kingdom of heaven sideways. He's a good man. We hear, you know, he observed all the commandments since, since his youth. So he wasn't a bad person. He was a good person, trying to do good things, trying to truly follow God's will. Jesus loved him. And said, in spite of the fact that you did all these marvelous things and filled all, fulfilled all these commandments, there's still one thing that you need to do which is lacking in your life. Sell all your possessions. Give to the poor. Work for treasures in heaven. And come follow me. And we hear in today's story, he goes away sad. He couldn't let go of all the stuff that he had with him. He walked away. And Jesus said to the disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And St. Mark says they were amazed what Jesus just told them. And so Jesus repeated what he said to them. My children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. I believe the Lord is telling us today 
that as we strive to enter into his kingdom, we have to realize there are two things that we must do. The first thing is we need to realize that we don't earn the kingdom of heaven. We don't work to get in. As much as this man in today's gospel followed all the commandments, he didn't earn a place to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's always a gift from God. And so one of the things you and I need to do is realize that all the good things we do, God doesn't owe us a thing. He wants to give us eternal life as a gift. In order to receive it as a gift, we have to do the second thing. we got to let go of all the baggage that you and I carry in life. And so today, I think our scriptures are inviting us to reflect on what are the possessions that you and I cling to? We know in today's gospel, it was material possessions. He had a lot of possessions he couldn't let go of. What is it in our life that you and I cling to, hang on to, won't let go of, that presents an obstacle for us to be able to receive the grace, the mercy, the eternal life that Jesus wants to give us? Now, for some, it might be this attachment to things. We live in a world that says to us, the one who has the most things wins. And some of us can get into that mindset. And we're forever buying this, that, and everything else just because we want it, not because we need it. And so we find that we find ourselves idolizing and worshiping stuff. And when we do that, It's going to be difficult for us to ever be able to enter the kingdom of God because we're hanging on to the stuff. We've got to let go of it in order to receive the gift of God's grace. But over the years, I've met people who were not attached to stuff at all. In fact, I was always kind of amazed, some folks who had lots of stuff, but they they gave it away all the time. They had lots of wealth, but they, they didn't keep it for themselves. They gave up lots of financial resources to the church, to charities, to all sorts of things. But I also discovered as I got to know some of these folks, they did have a possession they wouldn't let go of, and that was their time. It was easy for them to write a check and give it to someone, but boy, don't you ask them for their time. No, no, that was my time. I don't have any time for you or for this or for that. And that became their possession that they couldn't let go of. For others, it might be an attitude. An attitude of self-importance. An attitude that I'm better than everybody else. An attitude that sort of keeps people away. There's all sorts of things in our life that can become the baggage that we hang on to that prevents us from entering the kingdom of God. And so today, Jesus simply says, let go. Let go of whatever you and I are hanging on to, whether it's possessions or time or attitudes or whatever. Let go of that stuff so that you and I can be open to his grace, his mercy, his kingdom. We might be tempted to say, Lord, I can't do it by myself. It's impossible. And he would say to us, you're right. It is impossible if you try to do it all by yourself. And that's why we need to be here today in this sacred space, gathered around the table of his word and the table of his sacrament. To be strengthened by his word, to be nourished by his sacrament. But it's only Jesus and only the power and the grace of Jesus that can help us little by little let go of all the things that keep us from the Lord. As we continue to celebrate Mass today, let us pray for one another, asking the Lord to help each of us let go to help each of us not to try to get into heaven sideways, 
but looking straight ahead, knowing that our goal is the Lord. In order to receive his grace, his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness, we have to let go of anything and everything and everyone who becomes an obstacle, who becomes that possession we want to cling to. We can only come to the Lord with empty arms and open hands.